I want to demonstrate how to do a pivot table with uh, finding this type of information that we have in the gray text box. So it says find the revenues by product for each region. So we're dealing with three different variables here based off of this database, the, sell, the sales transaction database that we have here. So let me just widen this a little bit. We're dealing with three variables. Uh, amounts has to deal with the revenue. Uh, we, product, we have that information in column G. Region, we have that information in column B. So what I'll do, I'll just place my active cell anywhere down below the data fields, go to insert, and on the top left, I'll click on pivot table. I want to make sure that my uh, selection is correct for the table that I want to use, and that is correct. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, select this second option where I, I want my pivot table to be on the the same worksheet as my data here. And for the location, I'll just say place it anywhere right here. And I'll press OK. So then I have my uh, pivot table pane here where I'll be able to select my data fields into this quadrant. Um, and I have my template, my blank template for my pivot table. So this will automatically just start to populate based off of the variables that I put in these boxes down below on the bottom right hand portion of, of my screen. So I'm going to go ahead and, and put region in rows. So I'm just going to use a dragging method. And it's populated here. And I want to put product into columns. So this is how it's going to look like when I'm doing my comparisons based off of what I'm trying to find here. Um, now, if, if this is not the structure that I want, I can move these variables around like I'm doing now. And this is another way to kind of assess the information. So you want to kind of find what the best way, uh, the best possible way to, to present this information. And right now, what I want to do is I want to do a side by side comparison of these products as I'm looking at each one of these regions. So I have the product product variable, I have the region variable, and now I need to populate my pivot table with some values. And the, the one variable that I want to choose is the amount as it relates to revenue. And I'm going to drag it over to values. And by default, you'll notice that it says sum of. And, and I can change this if I don't want it to sum the amount. Uh, if, if, say, for example, I don't want it to sum each of the amounts that relate to that region in that product instead i wanted to say i want to count that product for each region for example I, I could do that and i'll be demonstrating that in a second so oh, make sure that you're aware that whenever you drag this uh, some sort of quantitative variable like i just did right now over to values what end up happening is it will give you the sum of and it, if you want to change that you can easily just go to value field settings and, and take care of it there. So I want to go ahead and uh, just take care of some of the formatting. Uh, since we are dealing with revenues, I want to put the dollar signs next to these values. Different ways of doing this. Uh, one way is you could right click uh, on the pivot table and go to value field settings, or you can go to the values box on the bottom right where it says sum of amount and uh, select that drop down and go to value field settings there. and in this box, um, we want to select number format. And then I'm going to select currency. I can select accounting, but it's, it's a different uh, way of spacing out the dollar sign, but I'll, I'll leave it as currency, press OK, then press OK again. And you will notice here that these values have the um, dollar signs in front of them. Uh, the grand total is there by default, but we can easily remove that if we wanted to. And uh, let's say we want to do some additional analysis on this. And, and that's what I want to do uh, next. So let me, let me go ahead and demonstrate how to add some additional numerical information here. Uh, now, the amount variable, you'll notice that it's found under values. I could bring in another amount variable and place it right underneath that sum of, sum of amount. So let me just go ahead and do that. And you'll notice here we have two of those. 
but I don't want a sum of amounts. Instead, I want to do a count. So let me select the value field settings option and change this to count. And it will count the number of products that is related to that region and, and give me that number. And it's going to do that for each one of these regions and for each one of the products. Um, if I didn't want to count, I could choose the average. So it'll look at the amount uh, per uh, transaction and try to find what the average amount would be. Uh, maximum, it'll look for the maximum product uh, value uh, and so on. So this would be the area where you would select from what type of quantitative information that you're looking for. I'm just going to go ahead and select count and press OK. And you'll notice that my pivot table is a little wider now that I have some additional information, not only on the sum of amount, but also on the count of amount. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and kind of take care of the labeling here. So I'll click on that cell where it says sum of amount. And I'm going to call this revenue. And then for count of amount, I'll go ahead and just say quantity. And you'll notice that this automatically changes for the, uh, for the DVD portion of my pivot table. Um, now, again, this represents the quantity of a particular product. So this is the quantity of, in our case, this is the quantity of book. Uh, yes, it's the quantity of, of books, as, as and we also have its revenue right next to it there. And, uh, this is a little bit of a wide pivot table. So this might not be the best structure uh, in, in this example. So let me see if I can possibly move some of these variables around. Um, instead of me having to kind of scroll horizontally to look at the rest of this information. So what I'll do is I'll select product and I'm going to bring it down into rows right underneath the region. So I'll select that drag it down over there. And now we we have this type of structure. And so I would say it's a little bit better to read. Um, and you also have the option of filtering up and filtering down the information. And that's, that's represented by these icons that you see right next to the region. So we have the square with a minus sign. And if I were to click on that, you get a plus sign. So this just filters the information up. And let me just go ahead and do that for each one of the regions. So we have uh, we have information at an aggregate level, uh, at a high level, where we can just kind of assess the region, the revenue, and the quantity of products that were sold. If we wanted to do a breakdown and see this information at a more granular level, I can just do a filter down by pressing on this plus sign and I can do a comparison with the uh, with the different products involved right so we have the aggregate information here but we also have the breakdown for revenue as well as for quantity so this is a very neat way of presenting the information and I can just go ahead and do that for whichever region that I'm interested in here right so it's a matter of playing around with the information that you have with, with, with the variables you have and, and try to present it in the best possible way. So hopefully this gives you some perspective on how to use pivot tables. We could, on top of this, include some data visualizations off of this pivot table, where uh, depending on how we filter up and filter down, we can have maybe a bar chart that represents each region and, and the revenues and the quantities and so on. So that's something that we're going to be doing in the next chapter.